for reviewer for Neutron. And today I'm going to talk about, uh, I can't ping my VM, so it's a talk about uh, common problems in Neutron. And I will provide a solution to solve them. So uh, usually uh, when somebody comes to me and has a problem with networking, uh, that's the kind of expression this person has. Uh, like, if you don't know much about uh, OpenStack or a Neutron, uh, it's just very hard to understand what's going on. Like, uh, people try to fix their problem with uh, random solutions, like uh, rebooting the VM or uh, uh, restarting Neutron or, uh, I don't know, any, <laughs> any kind of weird stuff. And they try to find a solution online, but uh, it's not always there. And in the end, they just get uh, very upset, and they want to break everything. But uh, so what I tell you now is just brief, relax, because probably after this talk, uh, you will be able to solve uh, the most common issues, and you'll be happy. So we can uh, classify the, the, the most common problems in two categories. Uh, so I have to say, uh, most of them are due actually to uh, misconfiguration. So like you put something wrong in, in the config files. Uh, this happens a lot if you install OpenStack uh, yourself, but it might also happen if you're using a tool and you're not uh, configuring the tool correctly. Or uh, it may be a misconfiguration of the underlying network, because uh, even if uh, Neutron is virtual, actually the, the packets, they flow uh, in, in the physical network. So if the physical network has problems, of course, uh, Neutron won't work. And uh, so a common problem might be uh, you have a firewall that it's uh, filtering some, some packets, or uh, you have a switch that for uh, uh, it's configured uh, not to let uh, some VLAN ID goes through. So these are uh, common issues. Or uh, you might uh, actually uh, encounter a real bug in the code. Uh, in this case, uh, you might find a solution online because uh, I don't think you're the only one uh, hitting it. And if you are the very first person that uh, finds this bug, then uh, you should file a, a bug report and the Neutron team will look into it and probably uh, will come back to you with a solution quickly. Uh, so let's start uh, with the, the first uh, uh, issue that you might find. Um, I can't ping or I can't SSH uh, my VM uh, using uh, its private IP. So the way I structure this talk is that uh, in the, in the, I have like a few problems. And uh, for each of them, in, in the first part, I will just uh, give you some background that you need to understand uh, what's going on. And then in the second part, I will actually provide you a solution, or I will guide you to uh, find a solution. Um, so this, um, this problem, uh, pinging the, the private IP of a VM, I have to say it's not uh, very common. Uh, the, the, the most common is probably uh, to ping using the floating IP. But uh, I think it's, um, it, this is easier. So it's better if we uh, tackle this first. So it will be uh, easier for you to understand the floating IP case. Um, so these are like a first uh, checks that you can do. And these are no-brainer. I mean, even if you don't understand the internals, you will be able uh, to perform them. Uh, so the first one uh, is the VM up and running. So this might seem very trivial, but <laughs> actually it's not so trivial because, uh, yeah, believe me, I found many times that uh, like uh, somebody uh, comes to me and say, oh, Neutron is not working, and then uh, the VM is not even up. So of course, if the VM is not up, then uh, you won't be able to, to reach it. And um, so a good way to, to check that is uh, if you do a Nova list and you check the status of the VM. So if you see that the VM is an error state, uh, you should understand why. And um, to do that, you can just uh, grab for trace uh, in the uh, neutron folder uh, in the log folder of neutron and, and nova, and you probably find a stack trace that uh, tells you what's uh, what's going on. And uh, sometimes it might be not even like neutron related. Maybe uh, you're out of uh, you run out of disk space, 
So that's why the VM is not up. So I suggest you check that first. Then another uh, kind of trivial check is, uh, so remember that uh, the default security group, they don't allow ICMP. You have to configure that. So if you don't do that, then of course you won't be able to, to ping your VM because the traffic will be blocked. And uh, then uh, last check is about the uh, underlying network, so the physical network. Uh, so check that the, the nodes of your cloud are able to, to ping each other, because if, uh, if you can't reach a node, of course you have a problem there, and uh, this won't work. Okay. So now let's, let's dig farther and understand a bit better how the whole things uh, work. So first of all, um, we need to answer this question. How does a VM get an IP in Neutron? And uh, to do that, we have to introduce a, a Neutron agent, that it's uh, the DHCP agent. So as the name says, it's uh, the, the agent that it's in charge of uh, DHCP. Uh, for those of you who are not very familiar with networking, uh, DHCP is a protocol that uh, is there to uh, provide an IP to the machines. And uh, the DHCP agent um, communicates uh, with the Neutron server uh, using RPC. Um, it ensures uh, network isolation using namespaces. So every network has its own uh, DHCP namespace. And inside this namespace, um, there's a, a process called DNS mask uh, that it's the one that it's actually uh, serving the DHCP. So the DHCP agent configures uh, this uh, DNS mask using a list file. So now uh, let's see more uh, in detail how this uh, IP allocation works. So uh, let's start from uh, Nova Compute that uh, receive a request uh, to create a VM. So Nova Compute will um, ask the Neutron server to allocate uh, the network. Uh, you see point one. Uh, we'll see in the next slides more in details uh, how this all works. But uh, for now, for the DHCP, uh, so let's assume everything went fine on the Neutron side and the port was created successfully. And at this point, the Neutron server will send a notification to the DHCP agent, uh, C.2, so the port create uh, and the notification. And the DHCP agent uh, so knows that there's a new port, a new IP to serve, and it will update the list file for uh, DNS mask uh, using this method that's called a reload allocation, uh, point three, and will also force a DNS mask uh, to um, load this new configuration file so that uh, the, the new IP will be served and the VM uh, will get its IP. Uh, so now, uh, I really want you to understand uh, what's like, the journey of the packet, because I think in networking problems, uh, it's really important that you know where the packet is supposed to be so that you, you can investigate and uh, really see where the packet gets uh, dropped or lost, and you can understand a bit more uh, what's the problem. Um, so we have two default implementation in Neutron, OpenV Switch and Linux Bridge. I will uh, explain both. So uh, let's start with OpenV Switch. Um, you see here we have a compute host where the VM is running and the network host uh, where the DHCP agent is running and you see the DHCP namespace there. So let's start from uh, point one, that it's uh, the, the VM that it's uh, requesting an IP. So this request uh, will go through uh, the firewall bridge. Um, the firewall bridge is a Linux bridge, and uh, it's actually there um, to be able to apply security groups. Uh, security groups in uh, Neutron, they are firewall rules, and they are implemented using IP tables. So unfortunately, you cannot apply IP tables to an interface that it's uh, connected to an OpenV switch port. So that's why uh, we had to put this Linux bridge in the middle, and that's why it's called the firewall bridge. Uh, so um, the IP tables will let the packet go through, and it will uh, reach the integration bridge at point two. Uh, the integration bridge 
is the bridge that it's uh, in charge of tagging and untagging uh, the traffic uh, that it's coming from the VM and go to the, going to the VM uh, using the VLAN ID associated with the network. So every network uh, has a VLAN ID. And uh, this VLAN ID is used internally in, in the compute host to isolate the traffic. Uh, that's why we call it local VLAN ID. And um, then, uh, so in this configuration, I'm using uh, tunneling, of course. You see the, the tunnel bridge. Uh, so the packet will then go to the tunnel bridge, uh, point three. Uh, the tunnel bridge, uh, as the name says, is uh, the bridge in charge of the tunneling. And so it has the flows that uh, then will translate the, the VLAN ID uh, assigned to the network into the segmentation ID. Uh, so for example, if you're using uh, grid tunnels, uh, the grid tunnel ID will be the segmentation ID assigned to the network. So at this point, uh, the packet will be encapsulated and will go uh, outside of the host, so through the wire, and will reach the network host. Uh, in the network host, uh, the tunnel bridge on the network host uh, will decapsulate the packet, so you see at point four, and uh, the packet will go to the integration bridge. And uh, finally, at point five, uh, it will reach uh, the DHCP namespace. Uh, inside the DHCP namespace, there's a DNS mask running, uh, so it will get the request of the VM, and it will reply with a DHCP offer, offering the the IP that it's uh, assigned to the VM. So let's see now the, the Linux bridge uh, implementation. Uh, you see that it's uh, slightly more uh, simple. Uh, so uh, le let's uh, start again from the compute host. Uh, you see the, the VM uh, that it's uh, sending the request in point one. In the Linux bridge implementation, uh, we have uh, one Linux bridge for every network. So you see uh, the net one bridge, so that it's the bridge corresponding to net one and the VM is on net one. Um, in this graph, uh, so I'm assuming we are using VLANs and uh, the VLAN assigned to net one is uh, VLAN 100. So you see that uh, the interface uh, plugged into net one bridge is uh, ETH 0 0.100, that it's uh, the one corresponding to, uh, to the VLAN 100. So at point two, the packet will go through this interface and then will, be, will go outside of the host. Uh, it will be tagged with the VLAN 100. It will reach the network host. Um, it will be untagged, so at point three, and it will get to the uh, net one bridge on the network host. And then at point four, will finally reach the DHCP namespace, where again, there's a DNS mask uh, serving the IP for the VM. So now if you want to, to dig farther, if you want to find the problem, uh, these are the, the kind of question that you should uh, think of. Like, uh, so first check, did the VM uh, receive uh, an IP? And you can check that from the console. You can just do IP other to see if, if the VM has got an IP. And if not, of course, uh, you have a problem there. And of course, you can't ping the VM. Uh, then I if the VM didn't receive an IP, uh, let's try to understand why. Uh, so first things to check is, is the DHCP agent up and running? Of course, if the DHCP agent is down, it, it won't work. And another thing you can check is, uh, is DNS mask running inside the DHCP namespace? And uh, then you can check if uh, the list file is uh, correctly filled. So for example, if the IP for the VM is not there, then of course you have a problem. Um, then something that you can check uh, regarding the underlying network is uh, uh, like, uh, is your uh, physical switch maybe uh, not allowing some VLAN ID? Uh, check that because of course it would cause problems. And then like uh, the last resort, and the, this is true for, for all the <laughs> networking problem, is uh, like uh, just TCP dump all the way. So from point one to two to three, and just uh, to see where the packet gets lost and try to understand um, what's the problem there. So let's see that the next uh, issue that you might find is like the VM uh, can't reach the external world. 
so for example, you're trying uh, to um, reach openstack.org from, from the VM and nothing. So to understand this problem, uh, we have to introduce a new agent, the, the L3 agent, that it's uh, the agent that in Neutron is in charge of uh, providing L3 connectivity and uh, nothing. It runs uh, on the network node, uh, same as the DHCP agent. And it also uses namespaces to ensure network isolations. Actually, uh, the, the router in Neutron is implemented uh, using namespaces. And it's, uh, it's the agent that provides access to the external network. Uh, so now, uh, again, let's see in, in both cases uh, what's uh, the journey of the packet when the VM is trying uh, to reach the outside world. So uh, same as before, uh, you see the, the VM at point one is uh, sending this packet that it's supposed to reach the outside world. Uh, it will go through the firewall bridge. The packet goes through. It will go to the integration bridge and then to the tunnel bridge. So the packet is encapsulated and goes through the tunnel. It will reach the network host. And uh, then at point four, it will be decapsulated. It will go through the integration bridge and then it will uh, reach uh, the router namespace because uh, the, the router is uh, the default gateway for the VM. So at this point, uh, what happens is that uh, there are IP table rules that perform uh, snatching. So the private IP of the VM is uh, translated into the public IP of the router. And after that, uh, the packet will go to the external bridge, that it's uh, the default gateway from, from the router namespace. And from the external bridge, it will go to the outside world. It's uh, so same story for, for the Linux bridge, uh, just uh, with with the, with the different uh, architecture. So we have uh, we have the VM that it's sending the packet. It goes through the net one uh, bridge, uh, point one. Then at point two, it will go through ETH zero dot hundred. Um, it will go outside, tagged with uh, VLAN hundred. It will be received on the network host. Um, at point three, it will reach uh, uh, net one uh, bridge on the network host. Again, at point four, it will reach uh, the router namespace because the router is the default gateway. It will be uh, snatched. And then at point five, it will go through the external bridge. And again, at point six, it will reach the outside world. So in this case, uh, what are the things that you need to check. Uh, the first one is very trivial, but like to be able to, to reach the external world, uh, the, the network uh, needs to be connected to a router that has access to the external world. So, and you do that in Neutron when you uh, set the router as a gateway. So the router will be connected to the external network and uh, then the VM will be able uh, to reach the external world. Of course, if, if you are on a network that has no router or whose router is not connected to the external network, this won't work. Um, then another check that you can do is like, uh, can the VM ping the router? Uh, this is uh, like to narrow down a little bit uh, the part of the journey that you have to investigate to find the problem. Because for example, if uh, the VM cannot ping the router, you know that it will never reach the external world, so you can focus your attention on, on the part of the journey from the VM to the router and see uh, what's the problem there. And uh, another uh, thing is, um, is the external bridge uh, configured correctly? So remember that you have to be able to reach the external network from the external bridge. So you need to have an interface that it's uh, plugged in the, in the external bridge that uh, from there, uh, you're able to reach the external world. If that's not the case, of course, you have no connectivity. And you can check that using OBS, VSCTL show that will uh, dump the configuration of, uh, of the bridges in the obvious case, or BRCTL in, if you're using Linux bridge. And uh, then uh, another check is, can you reach the external world from the router namespace? Uh, this is, again, to, to narrow the, the part of the journey that you analyze. Because of course, if the router uh, is not able to reach the external network, the VM won't be able either. And again, if you're using VLANs, 
make sure that those VLAN IDs are allowed in the underlying network. So now uh, I think this is probably the most common one, like I can't ping or nor SSH uh, my VM floating IP. So again, let's see uh, what's uh, the journey of the packet. Um, so we have the OpenV switch implementation. So as before, uh, the VM is sending the packet at point one. It goes to the, through the firewall bridge that lets the packet through. Then at point two, it will reach the integration bridge. It will be tagged. Then at point three, um, it reaches the tunnel bridge that uh, encapsulated the packet. It sends it through the tunnel. It will be received on the network host from the tunnel. Uh, it will be decapsulated at point four. Uh, it will reach uh, the integration bridge. And then at point uh, five, it will reach the router namespace. Uh, so at this point, uh, since the VM has a floating IP assigned, um, there are IP table rules that uh, snap the, the packet. So the, the source uh, IP, that it's uh, the private IP of the VM, will be translated into the floating IP assigned to the VM. And then at uh, point six, uh, the packet will go to the external bridge, uh, that is the default gateway. And uh, then at point seven, it will reach the external world. So I have the same on Linux bridge, but this time, let's see the other way around, that it's probably funnier for you. Uh, so uh, let's start from point six. So from the external world, uh, so in this case, I am pinging the, the VM. Um, so the destination IP is the floating IP of the VM. Then uh, point six, uh, the packet will go through the external bridge. From the external bridge, I will go through the router namespace, point five. Uh, then uh, since we, we have a floating IP assigned, there's an IP table rules that uh, translate the destination IP of the packet. Uh, so from the floating IP, it will be translated into the private IP of the VM. And uh, so from the router namespace, it will go to the uh, network one bridge. Then again, uh, it will go through the interface uh, ETH 0 0.100 will be tagged and will go, uh, will reach the compute host, uh, will be untagged at point two, and I will reach, will reach uh, the network one bridge. And so if security group will, uh, will let the packet through, then at point one, we'll finally reach the VM. So uh, what you have to check, uh, for this problem. Again, uh, so remember, did you configure the security group uh, properly? You have to allow ping and SSH. Uh, then uh, another thing you can check is like, um, is pinging the private IP of the VM working? So it's the first case that uh, in this presentation, because of course, if you can't ping the private IP, you have a problem there and you won't be able to ping the floating IP. So it's better you investigate the private IP case. And uh, then can the VM uh, ping the router? Because if the VM cannot reach the router, of course, it won't be able uh, to, to reach uh, the external world, so the floating IP won't work. And then uh, another thing you can check is can you ping the VM from the router namespace? And you can also check if you can ping the floating IP from the router namespace. It's a stupid check because the floating IP actually like lives in the router namespace, but if this is not working, then you know that that's, uh, there's something really messed up in the configuration of the router namespace. Um, then again, another thing that you can check is uh, the configuration of the bridges with the OVS via CTL show to see if you can spot some problem there. And then again, the last resort is to TCP dump all the way to see where the packet get lost or filtered or whatever. And so another uh, common issue, like uh, the VM uh, can't reach the metadata server. The, the metadata server is uh, the service that serves the, the metadata for the VM. Like for example, if you have um, uh, an SSH key, then the metadata server will serve that to the VM. And uh, in Neutron, um, there's the metadata agent that it's uh, the agent in charge of proxying the requests uh, from the VM uh, to, do to the metadata server, so to Nova. 
Uh, there are two ways you can configure it. Um, routed networks, that it's when you have a network that it's uh, connected to a router. And uh, so we'll see more in next slides. And uh, non-routed networks, when you have a network that uh, is not connected to a router, so it's isolated. So let's see both cases. So this is the case of routed networks. Um, so in this case, uh, the metadata proxy, that it's uh, a process that, uh, um, that it's spawned to proxy the request to the metadata agent. Uh, this is spawned by the L3 agent and lives uh, in the router namespace. So uh, let's see now the, the journey of the packet when, when the VM is uh, trying to, to get its metadata. So I'll explain only the, the Linux bridge uh, implementation. Um, so you see uh, on the compute host, uh, point one, the, the VM is sending uh, this packet. It will go uh, to net, net one bridge. Uh, it will go through ETH 0.100.2, will be tagged uh, using the VLAN ID assigned to the network, will reach the, the network host on point three, and then will reach uh, the net one bridge on the network host, and uh, at point four uh, will we'll reach uh, the router namespace, because again, the router is the default gateway for the VM. And uh, so in the router namespace, there's an IP table rule installed that will uh, redirect all the traffic that it's uh, meant uh, for the metadata server. It will redirect it to the metadata proxy that was spawned by the L3 agent. And the metadata proxy is a process that is there uh, listening for requests. And so we'll get the request of the VM and we'll add uh, some information in the HTTP header. It will add the IP of the VM and the router ID. And then we'll forward the packet to the metadata agent, point five. Uh, the metadata agent then, um, using the, the IP of the VM and the router ID, it will be able to request the instance ID of the, v of the VM to the Neutron server. And this is needed uh, for, to forward the request then to Nova at point six so that Nova will be able to serve the metadata for the VM. So the other um, like configuration that you can have is isolated networks. This is when, um, when you have a network that it's not connected to a router, but you still want uh, metadata um, to be served to the VM. And uh, you need to enable a flag in the DHCP uh, configuration file, the SCP agent configuration file. So if you set isolated metadata to true, uh, this is how it will work. So I explained uh, before that the SCP agent is the agent that serves uh, DHCP, and in the DHCP protocol, um, you can, of course, uh, you, it's used to assign an IP to a machine, but you can also specify other options. Like you can inject a route uh, using option one to one, and uh, that's what you, what's used in this case. So when uh, when the VM boots and requests for an IP, it will also get uh, a route injected, and this route will um, set as next stop to reach uh, the metadata server uh, the IP of the DHCP port that it's. Uh, uh, the IP of an interface that uh, resides in the DHCP namespace. Uh, so the VM uh, will know that to reach uh, the metadata server uh, as next hop, it, uh, it will need to go through the DHCP namespace. So let's go through the journey. So at point one, uh, the VM is requesting the metadata. The request will go through the uh, net one bridge. Um, will go at point two through this ETH 0100 interface. It uh, will be tagged and will uh, reach the network host. Uh, it will be untagged, point three, and it will reach uh, the network one bridge. And then at point four, will uh, reach the DHCP namespace. Uh, in the DHCP namespace, we have, uh, again, the metadata proxy that this time it was spawned by the DHCP agent. And uh, the metadata proxy, um, listens for the request, so we'll take uh, the request of the VM 
it will add again some information in the HTTP header, uh, specifically the, the IP of the VM and the network ID uh, of the network. And we'll forward the request to the metadata agent, point five. Uh, the metadata agent will uh, get the instance ID of the VM, will uh, uh, put it again uh, in, in the HTTP header, and will forward the request to Nova. So in this case, uh, things that you should check. Um, is the metadata agent up? Of course, if it's not up, it won't work. Is the metadata proxy up? Um, then you, you can look at the logs in the neutral metadata agent and Nova metadata agent to see if you find some trace that uh, uh, might help you understand what's the problem. And then uh, you can check that if the metadata server is reachable from the router namespace or from the DHCP namespace, depending on if you're using the rooted network or isolated network. And then one specific check for uh, isolated network. Uh, so make sure that you, the image you're using for your VM um, supports option uh, one to one, because if it doesn't, it of course, want to uh, receive the injected route and it won't work. Like, uh, so time ago, the serious image, for example, was not supported, uh, the option one-to-one. -one. And then, uh, yes, last resort, just uh, yeah, TCP dump all the way to see um, where the packet gets lost. So uh, we have the, the, the last uh, issue, like uh, with plugging timeouts, I don't know if any of you uh, got this kind of problem. Um, so to understand why we're getting a timeout in VIF plugging, uh, we need to introduce uh, another uh, agent, the L2 agent. Uh, this is the agent that runs on the hypervisor, so on compute nodes. It's uh, the one that configures the local uh, switches. So for example, BR int, uh, BR tan, or in the Linux bridge implementation, the, the bridges corresponding to the network, and so on. And it communicates uh, with the server, with the neutron server over RPC. And its main task is basically to wire uh, new devices, uh, where by devices I mean uh, tab interfaces uh, that are created by Nova and are connected to VMs. And uh, it's also the agent in charge of applying uh, security group rules. And as I was saying before, they are implemented using IP tables and IP set. So now let's see uh, how the, the VIF uh, plugin works um, more in detail. Um, so we start from uh, Nova Compute that uh, receive a request to create a VM. So Nova Compute will ask Neutron to allocate the network at point one, and at the same time, it will use a VIF driver uh, to plug the interface uh, in the uh, local uh, switch point two. So the, the tab is plugged into brint, for example, in, in the OVS implementation, and uh, the L2 agent uh, constantly monitors for um, updates in, in the interface. So we'll notice that a new interface was added at point three. And uh, it, of course, it will try to wire it. And to wire it, uh, it needs uh, to get some information from the neutron server. So at point four, we'll ask for uh, the device details uh, to the neutron server. So uh, the neutron server will then um, know the port uh, ID and the host ID of the host where the L2 agent is running, so it's able to bind the port at point five, so to write the association between port ID and host ID in the database. And then when, uh, when the L2 agent is done uh, wiring the, the device, it will just uh, at point six uh, notify that the device is up. So when, uh, when Nova at point one uh, makes this request to Neutron, it actually uh, starts a timeout. The, the default value is five minutes. So if Nova doesn't hear back from Neutron in five minutes, it will throw this uh, with plugin timeout error. So if you get this error, the things that you should check is, uh, of course, um, grab for errors in the Neutron server and the L2 agent logs. Also, the Nova, Nova logs could be 
uh, very useful. And uh, something to notice is that um, so if your system is very slow or if you're uh, performing some kind of stress test, uh, it might happen that you just need to tune the configuration values. So it's, it's not really like a, a bug, it's just that you didn't, uh, you need to adjust your value to, to match the speediness of your system. So you can, uh, for example, increase the VIF plugin timeout in the Nova configuration and give more time um, to, to, to plug the interface, or uh, you can uh, increase the RPC thread pool size and RPC uh, con pool size to make the processing faster. So now uh, I will uh, quickly go through uh, useful tools uh, that you can use to, to debug uh, neutron or networking issues. So first of all, to, to get general info about the system, uh, you can use IP header to display all, all the addresses that are on the machine. Uh, you can use a route-n to display all the routes, uh, IP table-l to display the IP table rules, um, ARP uh, to see the ARP table of the machine, and then uh, TCP dump. This is a, a very useful tool. Um, it's, uh, it basically displays all the packets that are going uh, through uh, a machine or uh, through an interface. And uh, there are lots of uh, facts that you can use, like, for example, uh, you can specify an interface with dash i, um, so you'll get only the traffic that it's flowing only through that interface. Uh, you can sp specify a protocol with dash n, um, you can specify, for example, virtual bridge with the dash and the I. Uh, you can run TCP dump inside an namespace. Uh, you can use logical operator like uh, uh, dash and ARP or ICMP if you want to get uh, both ARP and ICMP um, packets. And um, you can also use the uh, dash I any if you want to get the traffic of all uh, the interfaces on the machine. Then, um, to work with namespaces, uh, we use IP NetNS. Uh, you can list all the namespaces on the machine with IP NetNS lists. Uh, you can uh, execute a command inside a namespace with IP NetNS exec. And yeah, there are several examples of what, you, what commands you can execute in, in, uh, in a namespace. Then uh, specific to OpenV switch, um, you can use OVS VSCTL show to show the configuration of the bridges on the machine. Uh, you can use OVS DPCTL show if you want to know more uh, regarding uh, flows and hits and miss uh, of, this, of the ports on the bridges. Um, you can use OVS DPCTL's dump flows uh, to get a dump of all the flows installed, installed in, the, in the machine or you can uh, get uh, the flow that are corresponding to one bridge with dump flows and specifying the name of the bridge, or uh, specific to one table uh, with dump flows, uh, the name of the bridge and the number of the table. And then for a Linux bridge, you have a BRCTL show that will show the configuration of the uh, Linux bridges on the machine. And you can also just have the configuration of one bridge, uh, specifying the name of the bridge. And uh, so I put at the end useful links if you want to uh, know more about this topic. These are links that I found well done and useful. And yeah, so uh, there, there's a feedback button uh, in this summit so that you can give feedback uh, of the session that you attended. So I suggest you to use this button so that for next summit we can select uh, better talks. And uh, so thanks, everybody. And if you have a question, we have uh, maybe a couple of minutes. You were about can you go to the microphone, please? Uh, you have talked about that WIF uh, plug out, right? Timeout. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm just wondering, like, if something goes bad in Neutron, right? And Neutron could not respond to Nova. So what happens to the resources which is already allocated by Neutron? 
So whether the neutron will do a cleanup of those resources or how to handle, like. Sorry, because I can't hear you very well. So okay, uh, so oh, no, it's fine. Okay. is it perfect? Okay, so what I mean to say is, if if some kind of error happen in the error scenario, okay, so what what neutron does uh, with the resources already allocated? Let's say I create a port, but I could not give it on time to Nova, and Nova does the timeout. So what uh, Neutron will do with the created resource? OK, so what happens now is that if, uh, let's say, Neutron is too slow, uh, so you got the timeout, uh, Nova will clean up the resources. So uh, basically, will uh, tell Neutron to destroy the, the port. So that's what happens now. And actually, you can notice that it's your system that it, so that you should adjust your configuration value just because that happens. So you see that on the neutron side, everything is fine. So the, the, the port was created, the interface was plugged, just it was not done on time. Maybe it was done, I don't know, 10 seconds later. And then you get uh, the, the order from Nova to, to clean up, and you see that neutron cleans up. OK, so whether we are seeing some kind of synchronization issue with this, uh, any, any other problems being noticed? Uh, no, I don't think it's a synchronization issue. It's just that, um, I mean, in this specific problem, of course, you, you have to take into consideration the performance of your system. So if your system is too slow, you just have to adjust the configuration value. I agree that it could be done automatically, but I mean, uh, it's not there at the moment, and it requires uh, quite some work. OK. Thanks. Hey. Great talk, Rosella. I was, was wondering about option 121. Yeah. You said Sirius does not support it. And what's the requirement for a VM image to support option 121? OK. That's for uh, I would isolated. Say, yeah, I would say it's supported by 99% of the images. So it's very standard. So it, it's. Uh, uh, it, it would be really weird if it's not supported, but it's a possibility. Okay, thanks. Okay, I think we. Any other question or? No, we can close here. Thanks.